Yeah, hello everyone and welcome to this week's Cover Your Ass Zero Inspector Suit Series. Last week we talked about how buyer reps are slowly getting cut out of deals. Now you as the investor are now left to verify the numbers in an offering memorandum and understand where the ask price and the valuations are coming from to make sure you're making a informed decision about what your purchase price should be. What we're going to do is we're going to start at the top of the financial statement and over the course of the next few weeks work our way down. So we're going to start at the obvious spot, the current rents versus what they're implying is market rents. Now you're going to see a lot of packages that are going to show current rents with rent rolls of say $1,000 a month. And they're going to imply that the market rents are $1,200 a month. And they're going to show a lot of comps and those comps are going to support it. They're going to have the same square footage, they're going to have the same age, they're going to have a lot of a lot of similarities, and so your first instinct is going to say, okay, I, I guess $1,200 a month is something that's achievable, but if I run that through a model, assuming a 50-unit property at $1,000 a month, that's going to get me to an NOI of about $313,000. If I run that same $1,200 a month rent through the exact same model, it's getting me to an NOI of $406,000 and playing a valuation of $5.8 million. That's a 29% increase, a $1.3 million addition to the valuation that they're expecting you to pay based upon the offering memorandum without any justification for these rents or any justification as to why the current owner was not achieving those rents. So there are a number of reasons why current rents could be lower than market rents. It could just be poor management. It could just be that the property itself does not support $1,200 a month rents, but they're not going to tell you that. There could be bad e ingress, egress. There could be some questionable parts of the market that it's in. It could be poor tenancy. There's a number of reasons why this property does in fact support $1,000, not $1,200, because the $1,200 at the end of the day is an average. So some are going to be higher, some are going to be lower. You may just be looking at one that's lower. Another reason could just be the quality of the property. And so as with anyone who wanted to buy a C and turn it into a B or buy a B and turn it into a B plus, you can put money into a property and improve its valuation. And that's kind of what they're asking you to do by telling you you can go from $1,000 a month to $1,200 a month. But more times than not, I'm seeing packages leave out that CapEx budget. If I take the NOIs that I just implied, which will be in the blog, and assume a 10% market ROI for the money I need to put into a property to get that additional NOI, that's going to apply about $20,000 per unit. Now, if I take that $20,000 a unit on a 50 unit property, that's a million dollars of additional basis you're going to have to put into a property. But they're basically padding into an offer price. So the reality is it may be worth $5.8 million, but it's worth $5.8 million after you pay $1 million for the renovation to get it there which would actually imply an acquisition price of 4.8, which is significantly closer to the original valuation of four and a half million dollars. So you need to be able to better assess what current rents are and what market rents are. And I would always encourage anyone to buy a property based upon the current rents because any future appreciation of value, any future appreciation in cash flow is something that you're buying into, you're taking the risk on. You do renovation work and tenants move out because they don't want to pay $1,200, you're the one with the vacancy. You go to put $20,000 per unit in and it costs $25,000, you're the one paying the overage. So you should be the one reaping the benefits of the increased value in the future and not buying that future value today and then gambling that it's actually going to be there. If the seller wanted that value, they'd increase the rents to $1,200 themselves and then sell the property to you for $5.8 million as a stabilized property, not as a value add. So take a look at the blog tomorrow. It's going to have a lot more information. It's going to have all the numbers I just discussed, and it's going to better lay out exactly how market rents work, how these numbers really lay out, and how you should better protect yourself and cover your ass. Thank you, and I'll see you next week.